Welcome to lesson 3E. Remember, when you see the number 3 and a letter, we're going to be focusing on a single muscle and its movement. This lesson, the muscle is latissimus dorsi, and the motion we're talking about is pulling. This is what a latissimus dorsi looks like. And when you do any type of a pulling movement, you're using your latissimus dorsi. This big muscle covers the majority of the upper middle part all the way down to your lower back. This is what it looks like when professional bodybuilders have worked on their latissimus dorsi for many decades. Don't freak out and think this is what your backs are going to look like. If you are a regular guy or girl working out in the weight room, your back is going to look something more like this or this. Anytime you're doing a pulling movement, you're also involving your biceps. As you can see, your arms go from straight to bent when you're pulling, which is similar to a curl movement when you go from straight to bent. A lot of beginning lifters notice that their biceps get really tired when they're doing a pulling movement. Now you know why. So let's get back to the pulling motion now that you understand how the biceps are involved. I showed you this image in the pectoralis flies and pressing video. Remember how the different angles of the bench worked on different parts of the pectoralis? The concept here is the same, but now instead of doing a fly or pressing movement from a variety of angles, we're pulling from as many different angles as possible to best work the latissimus dorsi. Let's take our focus back to images of people working out in a weight room with various angles. In this image, this woman is pulling straight down from a high cable. In this next image, the angle changes slightly as she leans back slightly. Hopefully you can see how the angles change from up above you to eventually being out in front of you. Here is a different exercise with kettlebells, but you can see how the angle changes. This next exercise is called modified pull-ups, and you can see how the modified pull-up angle changes in this next image. And not only is she changing her angle, but she's using her legs to help pull herself up. Not only do people change angles in their latissimus dorsi movement, but they also change the way they grip the bar. The difference between a chin-up and a pull-up is a common way you change the grip on a bar. On a chin-up, you use an underhand grip. On a pull-up, you use an overhand grip. And sometimes people even split the difference on the grip, if the bar allows for it. These next two images are images of underhand grips while doing a pulling motion. If you want a little bit more bicep work in your pulling motion, this would be the grip for you. Now, if you want to focus a little bit less on your bicep and a little bit more on your back while doing your pulling motion, use an overhand grip. These images are of overhand grips. Next, we're going to talk about the width of our grip. The width of the grip is really to our own preference, but a lot of people believe that the more narrow you go, the more your biceps are helping out your lift. In this image, this bodybuilder has a pretty wide grip. In this next image, the grip is a little bit more narrow. Notice how the handles change as they choose to work with a more narrow grip. Let's take a look at all the other supporting muscles that help the latissimus dorsi when doing a pull. Remember, the darker the color the red, the more that muscle is working while doing a pulling motion.
the lighter the color the red, it's a support muscle, it's helping, but not doing quite the same work. This exercise is called a pull down. Notice the muscles that are working. Also, notice the grip. He's doing an underhanded grip. This is still a pull down, but with a reverse grip. So we call it a reverse grip pull down. In this image, he's using a rope attachment to pull down. Still called the pull down, but now it's a rope pull down. In this image, he's doing a pull in because he's pulling in as opposed to down. When you take the pull in movement and put it down to a bench or the ground, the name changes. It now becomes a seated cable row. Seated because you're sitting, cable because you're using a cable, and row because it looks like you're rowing a boat. This exercise is called a one-armed dumbbell row. Take a look at how flat she's keeping her back. This is a bent over barbell row. Again, take a look at how flat he's keeping his back. When you compare the form on the left, he's hunched over or rolled over. If you look at the form on the right, his back is flat and he's squeezing his shoulders. Every time you pull, you need to flatten your back. Over here, again, rounded, back, hunched over. A lot of lifters over the years have really hurt their back with improper form. So really focus on your form from the beginning. The amount of weight that you lift will increase as you get your form down. Remember, when you are bent over in any pulling exercise, you must keep your back flat and squeeze your shoulder blades back and together throughout your whole movement. Let's continue with the names of some of the more common latissimus dorsi pulling exercises. Here is a bent over straight bar row. Here is a one-armed cable pull. Believe it or not, there are still a lot of lifting movements that I could cover, but instead we're gonna go focus on, last but not least, the stretching. The key to stretching any muscle is making it long and relaxing. Hold your stretch. We wanna hold all stretches at least 30 seconds. Sometimes you can partner up. Other times, when you don't have a partner to grab onto, you can grab onto a bar, a post, or a pole. Anything that works. And again, hold on, relax, let it stretch. Make sure you use variety in your stretching as well. Just remember, make the muscle long and hold it for a long time. See you next time. Don't forget to take the quiz.